Hello, everyone, and welcome to New Consciousness Review. I'm Miriam Knight, and our guest today is Dr. Maggie Phillips, a Ph.D. psychologist in Oakland, California, and the author of a number of books, Healing the Divided Self and Finding the Energy to Heal and Reversing Chronic Pain. Dr. Phillips is also the creator of several online pain self-help programs, and you can find them on her website, MaggiePhillipsPhD.com. Today, we're going to discuss her most recent book that she co-authored with Dr. Peter Levine called Freedom from Pain, Discover Your Body's Power to Overcome Physical Pain, just published by Sounds True. Welcome, Maggie. I'm so pleased you could join us. Well, thank you so much, Miriam. I am too. I'm looking forward to this. You know, Pain is such a prevalent part of modern day life. I find uh, the, the whole concept of freedom from pain fascinating. Uh-huh. Um, yes. I, I think your book holds out real hope for sufferers from chronic pain. So let's dive right into it. Sure. I, I would like to start with the wonderful example you gave of how an animal reacts to trauma. Yes. Um, let me just uh, build a little bridge here, so because some people who are listening may not understand the link between pain and trauma. Um, Peter and I have worked together for almost 30 years now, and uh, Peter has developed an approach called the somatic experiencing. Um, it was he who um, started getting curious about the ways that animals respond to trauma and why they don't have, at least in their natural habitats, they are able to recover uh, virtually completely. They don't show any lingering signs of trauma, whereas human beings, even if they have one uh, encounter with significant trauma, often will struggle with the results for the rest of their lives. And so uh, that was his question. What is the difference there? Uh, and what he found, which is now fairly common knowledge, but back in, in the days of the 1980s and even earlier, it was very radical. Uh, so it took a while for this approach to get included in the mainstream of dealing with trauma and pain. Uh, what he found was that there are three ways that we respond to trauma and that we are virtually the same as every other animal on the planet. And those are that we uh, run away from the threat if we can, uh, we fight back if we can do that, and if neither of those approaches work, we freeze because that is all that is left to do. The three and Fs, fight, yes. flight, or freeze. Fight, flight, or freeze. And, you know, the animal that we use to... Um, you know, to, to uh, define the, the freeze response is the possum, which in our culture, you know, we have the game called playing possum, which is pretending to be dead or asleep. And basically, uh, the possum it cannot defend itself. It cannot fight back. It is slow as molasses to move anywhere. And so it has become, you know, really proficient at freezing. Uh, and what happens is the, the possum, and we do too when we're in a free state, we go into a uh, profoundly different state of uh, mind-body awareness and connection, and we are protected from painful deaths because a cascade of chemicals are released. Most of them are very pleasant chemicals such as opioids, uh, endorphins and so forth. And the design is amazing, you know, in, in terms of uh, survival. Uh, so that if we're in a place where we cannot escape, we cannot, you know, uh, fight back or in other ways protect ourselves, then we have this state of shock and freeze that we move into, which cushions the blow, so to speak. And the problem with human beings is that unlike animals in, in the wild and domestic ones too, we frequently cannot, there's no way we could run away um, because often, you know, you can imagine trying to run away from a, a car accident. It's just not uh, practical. 
or even physically possible, nor can we fight back. Um, in many cases, we are powerless. We can't move, uh, depending on the trauma. And so we automatically, by default, go into the free state. And in, in our bodies, what that means is we become disconnected from the pain uh, long enough so that, uh, in, in the case of humans, help can come, uh, we can get help in surviving, or uh, we are able to eventually just shift out of that state on our own. But many people who've had repeated traumas, and we can talk about what those are in a few minutes, um, they don't release the trauma. Uh, if, you, if you think about deer in the headlights, which is very common where I live, it's almost always every evening I will uh, come across a, a deer. Lately they've been young deer. And um, they will freeze. You can see this when the headlights uh, move over them because that's their sign of threat. Something is about to get them. And so they will freeze. And then after the headlights move away, so the threat is gone, you can't see this unless you have a video of it, but uh, Animal uh, Planet and many of those uh, types of animal shows will routinely show this. The deer will very subtly shake and tremble all over and literally shakes off the effects of that danger, that threat, so that they move on about their business as if nothing happened. And, of course, what we don't have is the knowledge, first of all, that we need to shake off the effects of trauma uh, in our bodies, and, two, we don't know how to do it. So that's what our book is trying to help people learn about. You know, an interesting thought came to me as you were speaking. <clears throat> There's something called retrograde amnesia that occurs uh, at the point of a trauma so that the events immediately preceding and during the trauma are just wiped out of your memory banks. And we also get a lot of reports from people suffering um, out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, that at the point of trauma, they kind of rise up out of their body, and then um, only after uh, a period of time do they come back into it. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering if there could be some kind of correlation between these reports and, you know, this trembling motion being actually re-inhabiting your body, because a lot of your book is talking about mindfulness, but I'm wondering if, by extension, mindfulness could could actually be re-anchoring, re-grounding within your body. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, those are good questions, uh, Miriam. And I guess what I would say first is, you know, the 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 problem of retrograde amnesia is is very closely linked with dissociation. Dissociation is a um, automatic response. Um, it's connected to our dorsal vagal uh, nervous system. And, um, and so we don't get to choose whether we will disconnect from the traumatic thing that's happening to us. It just automatically will happen to protect us from being, you know, overwhelmed, overpowered. Um, obviously, if we try to hold the entire experience and it's life-threatening, you know, we are going to be completely wiped out and so that we can't use whatever coping abilities we have. So that's by design of our nervous system. And um, it can be a very, very good thing um, because we, it, there is a protective function. So that, I believe, does correlate with what you're talking about in that people coming back into their body when, like the deer, they've gotten, the brain has gotten some sign that the threat is over um, at least for the time being, and then the dissociation begins to automatically lessen, and as the dissociation lessens, uh, then the person can and does re-inhabit their body. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is to teach people um, how to, how to re-inhabit their body even after years of trauma, even after years of pain, that you don't have to feel like you've missed the boat if you've had, you know, you're just learning about this, this uh, approach that we're talking about uh, with the Freedom of, uh, from Pain program, 
uh, you haven't missed, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not that you've completely missed out on this. You can learn and use things starting now that are going to turn around, you know, the pain and other related problems that you struggle with. Uh, I think the important point to emphasize uh, here is that recovery from pain is our natural state. Yeah. But daily life in the modern world, unlike the animal life, is much more complicated. And you point out in your book that many of the traumas that we experience may not be physical. They may be emotional. Yes. So, and, yes. and explain how we pull those emotional traumas into our body and hold them there as well. 